Welcome to the ninth lecture on computational geometry. Today we will revisit the topic from our very first lecture, which was the convex hull. In the first lecture we found algorithms to compute the convex hull of a point set in two dimensions, and we had some different approaches to do it with different running times. Today we want to figure out how to generalize it to 3D, and that also then generalizes to an arbitrary higher dimension. Before we do that, we first want to look at the complexity of the convex hull. So let's say we have a set of n points in d dimensions. What is the maximum number of edges on the boundary of the convex hull? If we only have one dimension, then it means we just have a set of points that lie on a line. And then the convex hull is just the minimum and the maximum coordinate. So here the complexity is 2. That means uh, it is theta of 1. It's a constant. If we are in two dimensions that we also figured out in the first lecture, then we have the convex hull which is just this polygon that contains all the points. So here the convex hull is a simple cycle. In the worst case it contains all the points, so in the worst case we have n edges here. If we go to three dimensions, we have a set of points in three-dimensional space. You cannot see this very well here because it's just a 2D drawing. Then the convex hull is a polytope. That might look like this. It's a convex polytope. All the angles that we have inside are at most 180 degrees. And it's the smallest convex polytope that contains all the points. Now the question for you is, what is the number of edges we have in this polytope? Now, one quite elegant way to get the number of edges is, look at the graph that's spanned by this polytope. So we have as vertex set all the points that lie on the boundary of this convex hull, and as edges the edges of the polytope. Then gi this gives us a planar graph. There are a few ways to see why this is planar. One of them is we can add a point here very close to one of the faces and then compute the projection of the rays from this point through all the other points to the plane. And that gives us a planar graph. Another way is you take one face and you rotate the polytope such that this face is horizontal. And now you take all the vertices and you move them from the center outwards, but in such a way that at every step the polytope is still convex. And you keep moving and moving and moving until at some point this one face that you chose, if you look at it from the bottom, you can see the boundary of it. And if you do that, then if you look at the polytope from the bottom, then you see all the edges and all the vertices. There are no hidden edges and vertices. That means if we project it down to the plane, then we get a drawing of this graph spanned by the polytope that is crossing free and in the plane. So it's a planar drawing, so it is a planar graph. And for planar graphs we know from Euler's polyhedra formula that the maximum number of edges is 3n minus 6. So this is the worst case complexity of the convex hull in 3D. What about the general case? Well, if we look at this, we see in one dimension we have constant, in two and three dimensions we have theta of n. That looks like every second dimension the worst case complexity increases by a factor of n. And that's true in general. In general, the worst case complexity is n to the d over 2 rounded down. So if we have 3, then this is n to the 1. If we have 4, then we have n squared. With 6, we have n to the 3, and so on. And this is the so-called upper bound theorem. What we want to do in today's lecture is figure out a construction for this case of three dimensions. And we want to do it in a randomized incremental way. If you remember, in a randomized incremental algorithm, we would take all the vertices or all the points that we are given and randomize the order that we insert them in. And then in every step we want to look at the first i points 
we have already constructed a convex hull for them and we add the next point to it and then we want to construct a convex hull of the first i plus one points from this. And to figure out how to do that, we have to know if I add another point, for example here, what does this point see? Which of the faces bit of, of the edges are visible and which are invisible? Whatever is invisible, we don't even have to change anything. So we need some concept of visibility. So let's say we have a polytope. This can be the convex hull of the points we already looked at. And I want to look at a single face, like this face F here. Now there might be two points, the point P and point Q, and I want to know which of them sees the face F. How do we define that? Well, we can take the plane that is spanned by the face F, which would be here, the, be the plane HF. And now the point P lies above the plane, the point Q lies below it. In particular, Q lies on the same side as the polytope and P lies on the other side. And then F is visible from P, but it is not visible from Q. A bit more informally, from P we could draw a segment to this face without crossing any part of the polygon. But if I want to go from Q to the face, then at some point I have to go to the inside of the polygon to get there. Now, let's say we have our polytope so far and we have the new point R. What does it see from here? To do that, we can shoot some rays. So I want to shoot a ray from R to every point that is a corner of the convex hull. And for some points, for example, for this one, if I create the ray here, I will go inside the polytope and leave it again. But for some points, in particular these, if I shoot the ray through them, I don't go to the inside of the polytope. I only you know, cut through the point itself. And now the blue part, those the faces that we don't see. And the white part are the faces that we do see. So figuring out what we see and what we don't, we can do via these points. If we look at the projection to the plane, then we would get a polygon here. And that polygon corresponds to the edges between these points where we don't go inside the polygon, which are these edges here. And these we call the horizon. That's the last edges that we still see. We can see everything inside here and we can see those edges, but we cannot see anything on the other side of the edges. Like if you look out of the window, there is some horizon that you can see. There you can see the planes in front of you and then up to some point and behind that you cannot see anything. That's the horizon for us, the last edges that we can still see. And to aid our randomized incremental approach, we want to define a conflict graph. The conflict graph tells us which of the points we haven't processed yet see which of the faces that we currently have on the convex polytope. So we have a vertex for every point that's not yet processed and a vertex for every face of the convex hull. And then we have an edge if they are visible. Those are the conflicts or the visibilities. So in this case, the point R could see these faces, the green ones. Those are the conflicting faces. Why do we call them conflicting faces? Because if I want to add in the next step the vertex R, then if I create the convex polytope, the convex hull of this, I would have to add all these edges that correspond to the rays that we found here. And then the con new convex hull would still have the horizon, but then it wouldn't have any of the green faces anymore because we add all these edges here, we get new faces between the new vertex and the horizon edges. And all these green faces we have to destroy. So there's a conflict. The same way for a face, we can define which points see it, with which points am I in a conflict, and that gives me the P conflict of the face. 
And with this concept, we can describe our algorithm.